everybody. If you're a writer, you've probably heard countless people tell you the importance of reading. You don't need to read fast, you don't need to read hundreds of books a year, but you do need to read because that's the best way to understand the craft. Now, I personally recommend reading all sorts of genres, but at the very least, you need to read the genre in which you're planning to write because that will give you an idea of your target audience's expectations. That's what we're talking about today. Some writers, especially if they've been in the industry for a while, aren't able to turn off the writing side of their brain while they're reading. I'm one of those writers. I notice every grammatical error, I see every single plot device, and I'm constantly analyzing the pacing, the structure, and the tropes utilized. But if you haven't been in the writing gig for long, you may not have this problem. In fact, you may want to get more out of your reading so you can grow as a writer. I'm going to give you the basic steps to do just that. Today, I am breaking down the steps for reading as a writer, especially if you're reading within your genre. This topic was requested by one of my newsletter subscribers, Bagyashi. Thank you so much for the amazing idea. And if you'd like the chance to request a video topic of your own, subscribe to my newsletter. I got it linked below. Now I'm going to break down all the ways you can learn about writing simply by cracking open a book. Are you ready, butters? I think we're ready. <laughs> Before we get started, I have some super exciting news. I've teamed up with my friends over at Mibble Art in order to create a seven day email course all about the best book launch tips and strategies. If you're not familiar, Mibble Art is a book cover design company for indie authors. They believe book cover design is a great marketing tool for writers, which is why they have designers specializing in different genres who research the market and competitors before starting work on your cover. They do fiction cover design, nonfiction cover design, illustrated cover designs, 3D renderings, logo designs, branding, and marketing materials for authors. You already know Mibble Art designed my cover for Shut Up and Write the Book, so I was super excited when they approached me for this seven day email course. Again, this course is all about book release tips and strategies. I'm breaking down everything I do in order to make my book releases a number one Amazon bestsellers. And best of all, this course is 100% free. All you need to do is sign up for the newsletter and start receiving tips. I have the link listed below. And on top of it all, at the end of the course, you will be receiving a special gift from Mibble Art. I can't wait for you to enjoy the course. Don't forget, it's linked below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I post new videos on Wednesdays, and if you want to be alerted as soon as I upload, you gotta ring that bell. You already know that half the time, this little lady is here with me chilling, and you don't want to disappoint Buttercup. Shut Up and Write the Book is available in ebook, paperback, hardback, and audiobook. So if you want a step by step guide to crafting your novel from plan to print, definitely check it out. It's linked below. The Savior's Champion and the Savior's Sister are available at all major retailers. So if you like yourself some dark fantasy romance, you gotta check them out. I'm telling you to do it. You'll thank me later. They're linked below. Now I'm going to tell you you how to read like a writer so you can get the most out of your TBR. First things first, when you pick out your next read from within your genre, there are five things you're going to want to analyze. First up is structure, which is the backbone of every novel. Structure refers to the format in which your story is told, and every novel has one. On the most basic level, a storytelling structure includes the inciting incident, rising action, climax, falling action, and resolution. If you're new to the writing game, a great starting point is to read through fiction and try to pinpoint all of these moments within the book. For example, the inciting incident is when the main character is thrust into action. In The Savior's Champion, this is when Tobias races toward the pool so he can enter the Sovereign's Tournament. Begin by reading through your TBR and locating each of these structural elements. This will not only ingrain storytelling structure into your mind, but it'll also help you generate ideas on how to implement these elements into your own work. Once you feel comfortable with the basis of structure, branch out into more minute structure elements, especially from within your specific genre. The breaking point is a very common structural element in fantasy romance, so when I'm reading my genre, I try to locate the breaking point and see how the author handled it. The second point to analyze is plot, which heavily overlaps structure, but now we're going to go so much deeper. That sounded a little sexual, just 
please ignore that. This is where we analyze the story itself, the scenes, the expectations, and the stakes. When reading through your genre, pay attention to the types of scenes you usually experience. For example, when you're reading romance novels, more often than not, you will come across a scene where the characters almost kiss and then for whatever reason, they're pulled away. This leads into paying attention to target readership expectations. The more often you see a particular plot device, the more you get the idea that this is an expectation among readers. In sci-fi space operas, readers usually expect several species of aliens, they expect a lot of space travel, and they expect adventure. And last, we run into stakes. Some novels have very high stakes, like life or death. Others have low stakes, like heartbreak or happily ever after. Pay attention to how the plot unfolds and how much is at risk for your main character. Next, you want to look at pacing which is how fast or slow a particular scene moves. This doesn't necessarily mean the scenes are long or short. Some scenes can be very fast paced but very long, and some scenes can feel very slow but they're short. Pacing usually depends on sentence length, verb choice, and description. Powerful verbs often create a faster pace, and lengthy descriptions usually lend themselves to a slower pace. Long sentences can slow down the reading pace, whereas short sentences can speed it up. Now, typically most novels are made up of slow and fast paced scenes, that's very normal. But you want an idea of the overall pace of the novel. Is it mostly slow or mostly fast? Action adventure novels tend to be fast, coming of age novels tend to be slow. Pay attention to how the author achieves this effect and how you could potentially utilize that in your own work. Also, I've said it before and I'll say it again, know your genre. I've read a 14 page sex scene in a rom-com before, and that sort of thing would never fly in a multitude of different genres. Analyze the sentence structure, the depth of description, and honestly, just how fast or slow a scene feels. This will give you an idea of the proper pacing for your own work. Next, we analyze my favorite part of writing, characterization. Tons of readers read for the characters, and even even if they don't, shitty characters can still ruin the reading experience. First, pay attention to character types. Even if you're not familiar with standards in the genre, look for trends. Are you seeing a lot of warrior women who don't need a man to save them? Are we seeing a lot of tricksters and manipulators? Are you seeing a lot of royalty with a secret troubled past? What are the character traits you see associated with these main players? Are the main characters often bumbling and fumbling whereas the love interest is seemingly perfect? Are the villains widely adored and worshipped whereas the main character is an underdog? How do you react to these characters? Do you empathize with them? Why or why not? Pinpoint the characters that draw you in and study them. Note, this is not so we can copy and regurgitate characters, it's so we can learn what we are most drawn to. Also pinpoint characteristics that don't work for you. What about them is turning you off? Honestly, this section alone could be its own video. In fact, I am planning on writing a book about this. Bottom line, you are looking for characters who most call to you, who get you invested in their story, and you're trying to analyze why that is. And last but not least, you gotta analyze the author's prose. This covers a wide range of content because we're looking at the writing itself. Pay attention to grammar, sentence structure, and syntax. Is it working for you or is it stilted? How does the writing change from scene to scene? Compare an emotional scene to an action-packed scene. What's the difference on a sentence level? Is the author leaning into purple prose or are they straightforward and to the point? Pay attention to your descriptions. We're talking settings, characters, body language, clothing, all of it. What is standing out for you? What are different tactics that you can use to improve your own writing? Did the author describe something in a way you'd never considered? Did the author drone on into until you wanted to put the book down and kick it into a corner. This process is fun for me because this is where you get to see the personality of the writer. Now that you know exactly which elements to analyze, it's time to take this knowledge and put it to use. Starting with the basics, what are the common trends you see within this genre? What are the structural elements, plot devices, pacing, character types, and writing styles that you most often come across? I'm going to use my own genre as an example based on the books I've read. Starting with structure. Fantasy romance books I've read usually start with a moment of violence or wickedness, and the inciting incident often occurs in the second chapter. Looking into plot, I've yet to see a fantasy romance book that didn't include a dark night of the soul, or as I like to call it, the breaking point. On a pacing level, we usually see fast-paced 
fight scenes and slower paced romance. Characterization will always vary no matter the genre, but you're going to see some characters that pop up more than others. In fantasy romance, we see a lot of anti-heroes, we see cinnamon rolls, warrior princesses, assassins, and so on. And when we look at the pros, this will almost always be on a novel by novel basis. This girl is just getting a massage while I work. <laughs> oh yes, does that feel nice? Next, you wanna take a look at tropes. Which ones resonated with you? Anyone who tells you to avoid tropes in your writing is full of shit. You should avoid cliches, which are overused tropes, but you couldn't avoid tropes if you tried. If you're writing and reading murder mystery, you'll probably come across these tropes. The whodunit, which I'd argue is a requirement for the genre. A red herring or early suspect. An anti-hero detective who is cynical and jaded and maybe disgraced. Incompetent police, which honestly pairs well with the former point. A nosy reporter or neighbor, a victim that everyone hated, and of course, a twist ending. Some of these tropes may be staples of the genre, which means you are more or less obligated to include them. Other tropes are a free-for-all, and in that case, which ones did you enjoy most? Those are the ones you wanna include in your writing. And now we get to the most obvious points. What about this book worked for you? You're not reading with the intention of copying. You're reading to find elements that you are drawn to and analyze how that author utilized them. Look back at everything you've learned. What spoke to you as a reader? Even if you didn't love a book, you could still find elements that worked for you. For example, I'm interested in writing contemporary romance or rom-coms in the future, so I've been reading a lot of books within that genre. The most recent rom-com I read was a solid three stars. The plot wasn't really my jam, I wasn't particularly invested in the characters, but I absolutely loved the prose. I really enjoyed the descriptions, and there was a lot of clever wordage used during the romantic moments. They did a good job writing sex scenes without making them gross or cringy. Because of this, I was still able to get a lot out of the reading experience, even though the book wasn't exactly my cup of tea. I analyzed their writing style, word usage, and descriptions in order to improve my own. Last but not least, what didn't work for you? Just because you want to write in a genre doesn't mean you have to hop aboard every trend it pops out. For example, it's very common in fantasy romance for there to be an alpha male. This usually means a guy who is predatory, domineering, and controlling. As a reader, this doesn't appeal to me. Those characters just make me annoyed and uncomfortable. But just because it's a common trend doesn't mean I have to include it in my work. If it's not a requirement of the genre, you don't have to write it, period. I've also found techniques and prose that were a bust in my opinion, usually in regard to world building and descriptions. You're not obligated to mirror every author in your genre, in fact, that would be impossible. The point of reading as a writer is to pick and choose which information is valuable to you. Pay attention to the writing styles and storytelling choices that make you roll your eyes or want to put the book down. Don't write that shit! I cannot stand books that are overflowing with purple prose, so I try to limit the purple prose in my own books. It's really as simple as that. And once you've done that, congratulations, you have analyzed your TBR like a writer. Take all that good stuff you've learned and use it to improve your work. So that's all I got for today. Don't forget to sign up for my seven day email course with Mibble Art. It is free to participate in. I've got it linked below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I post new videos on Wednesdays and if you wanna be alerted as soon as I upload, you gotta ring that bell. Shut Up and Write the Book is available in ebook, paperback, hardback, and audiobook. So if you need a step-by-step -step guide to writing your book from plan to print, definitely check it out. If dark fantasy romance is more your vibe, check out The Savior's Champion and The Savior's Sister. They're available at all major retailers and you want to get on board because the Savior's Army is coming soon. And be sure to follow me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and BookBub. And of course, you can tweet me at Jenna Marassi. Bye! Oh, hello there. I'm Leila and I'm off to a meeting with a senator. While you're here, why don't you subscribe to Jenna's channel and ring the bell? That way you'll always know when her videos go live. It's the perfect distraction. I mean, entertainment. Well, off I go. Ignore the blade. It's just for show. Bye.